if I go flashback, you know, when I started my journey into visual effects, I mean, uh, you know, in the, at the beginning, I wanted to kind of, you know, just I spoke to my father that this is what I want to do, visual effects, and this was back in 2000, 1999. And that's where he was like, wait a minute, what is visual effects? You know, I mean, like, nobody's ever heard of that. You know, he checked with his friends, uh, nothing, there was no internet, there was nothing online available. And I was like, Dad, this is something which I love doing, and, you know, I, I want to genuinely do this. <clears throat> he was a typical dad wherein he said, okay, you know, there are, there's MBA, there's engineering, there's, there's so much to do. Why? I mean, why do you want to do something which doesn't really have any uh, presence or future? So I followed my heart. I was, I was very adamant that this is what I want to do, and I kind of ended up, uh, you know, taking up a very small, you know, course back then. I, I, I started studying uh, on, on my own, you know, because there was, there was no formal education. You know, I obviously missed out on all the MBAs and, you know, all you great minds here. I couldn't do that. So I started following my heart and I took up a small course and I started uh, doing everything, you know, on the, like whatever I had on the, on the internet. I started studying. It was all basically on my own. I, you know, gradually got down to that path and uh, soon I kind of, you know, find, found myself in a very small odd job uh, in, in, um, in TV. And, you know, which is I was basically doing some, you know, basic logo animations and, uh, you know, very basic supers coming in and, and, and that, that kind of work. I was like, okay, this is, uh, this is fun. I mean, I'm doing what I, what I like doing. Gradually, you know, over the years, uh, around two decades, and I, I started, you know, doing a lot of commercials, you know, great commercial work, uh, pack shots, you know, making sure these packs look nice and glossy with all these commercials which you see on, on TV right now. I did that for, for most of my, uh, my career. My ultimate game was to get into feature films. Now, that's something which I love. Uh, back, back, uh, back in those days, I started, you know, I watched, uh, you know, a, a film called Toy Story. That was an animated film, and I, was, I fell in love with it. I was like, this is, this is amazing, you know, what computers can do, and this is what I want to do, you know. And uh, so since then, I, I tried my hands on animation. I got rejected. And, uh, and I was like, okay. And they needed like a formal training and education. And I was like, okay, I, I couldn't draw that well. And uh, my interest started gradually, uh, you know, uh, growing towards uh, the art of visual effects. Now, <clears throat> coming to visual effects, for those who don't basically know what really, the, you know, I mean, I'm sure that there are so many movies right now that, you know, we've all seen great visual effects films. But India, I would, I would specifically talk about visual effects in India because uh, it's 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 at that very interesting juncture right now that that the world is looking at India as a, as a visual effects hub, and my intent uh, a couple of years back was exactly this. You know, I was seeing India as 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 a, as a as a country which can really uh, deliver high end visual effects because I really believed in the artists here, and uh, and back then we, you know like people like me you know we were just four or five uh, supervisors back then, who constantly who were working with a lot of big time film directors. And uh, we were constantly educating them, you know, because they didn't really know what visual effects was. And to them, it was a very odd, you know, like a simple job, you know, like if something went wrong, let's call Viral. And uh, that's probably, you know, the slide which I have here is, have you met Viral? So whenever, this is, this is something which, uh, uh, you know, which was shot by me, uh, you know, on, on a film set, you know, we were shooting a film and, uh, it was uh, at that point of time. Uh, it was just like you know something went wrong on set. Okay, Viral will come in and he will probably paint it out in post, and uh, and that's the reason why they used to all call me. And this is something which I didn't really want to do. What I wanted to really do is is create images which kind of blow people's minds, and uh, and, and again like from from that that point onwards, what we went on to was 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 again creating like a photoreal. Uh, you know, uh, images, you know, which, which kind of, you know, just look, you know, completely invisible on screen. So uh, that was, that, that became my key factor that, okay, let me get into a photoreal, uh, you know, visual effects scene because there are, there are two kinds of visual effects. One is creative visual effects and the other is completely photoreal. Now, the photoreal uh, part of the visual effects is, is usually the most challenging because like people like you, when you go and watch films, you know, uh, the moment you see something which is fake, you would immediately get disconnected by the, uh, uh, you know, from the story part of it. And that's, a, that's the most complicated part to, 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 you know, teach the human eye that, okay, this is what I see is, is completely real. So I started focusing more and more on, the, on that aspect of visual effects, you know, while the other aspect, which is the creative visual effects, which we all see in the Avengers, the Marvels, you know, we all see that, okay, this is, this is 
out there in front of you. This is right, right in front of your eye, and it's it's creative. It's 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 fun. But to me, that really didn't uh, uh, catch interest. So I went into the photo real part of things, and uh, started you know you know interacting with a lot of big time directors like Raju Hirani, uh, and and so on and so forth. So I, you know, I like you know films like uh, you know I did films like PK and Sanju. You know, wherein uh, you know we did so many things in the film that really cheats the human eye. You know, motivating more that okay, this is this is what I want to do. You know, this is I want to make you know uh, images look so real. Uh, you know, using technology that uh, that people should just you know they should be just you know they like nobody like people like us. You know, when we uh, when we finish our project and we uh, we deliver the project to the client uh, and and when the film you know wins the all the awards and acclamations, visual effects has never been spoken about. Because it's all invisible, it's it's so unreal that you know people didn't even know that this was this was done using uh, technology. So that was uh, something which I you know kept going on. Now again, uh, for me it was very important to take the Indian uh, you know visual effects standards to to a level where you know every person you know every audience who probably watches a, a, a Hollywood film would just say that why is it that it's never been done in India, and that was my constant. Uh, motivation to to you know, to to make sure that there was, there should be a day you know wherein uh, audiences in India would say that okay this is quality visual effects this is the level where okay this is what I've seen in a Marvel or a Hollywood film and this is what India can deliver so my constant aim is to get into that uh, that aspect. <clears throat> so that's the slide. So we've all seen Mr. India, right? I mean this is this is a film which. You know, when I kind of, you know, uh, when I was growing, and and this really struck me, that how in the world did they really make this guy invisible? Now that's the power of visual effects. You know, the visual effects, the kind of visual effects which support the story, and which allows the director to say a certain story, is the true power of visual effects. I believe very strongly that that visual effects as a department uh, in in a in a typical Bollywood uh, or a typical filmmaking uh, process is so important, and it should it should be looked at so seriously that. You know uh, that you know, it, you know directors should be free to to come up with uh, you know, newer ideas, and I always believe that you know creativity, you know pushes technology. You know because we come up with ideas as supervisors, it keeps on pushes technology, and technology also does the same. You know wherein the technology also keeps you know uh, keeps pushing themselves, and thus you know gets the creative creativity outside uh, you know within us as well. So what does the future hold? Another thing which I uh, which I've been very passionate about is is uh, digital human beings and faces. Now this is one of the most complicated aspect of of filmmaking. A lot of films in the in, in the in the West have been trying to you know make this a possibility. We've all seen films like Benjamin Button, wherein you know the the, the faces are all digitally created. Now this is in India is at a very nascent stage. So we, what we uh, are trying to kind of do is really push those boundaries to make sure that this is possible. Now, when we come to Airtel 5G, the commercial, you know, which we, which we've all seen, uh, you know, the, the, you know, there was this concept wherein you know they wanted to recreate uh, the 1983 World Cup with Mr. Kapil Dev, and uh, but the challenge was that how do we make him look like he was in 1983? You know, uh, new tech and uh, you know so much of new tech which is uh, currently available to to you know to scan a completely 3D face. To the detail, such as pores, to the skin details, to everything. So we did that with Mr. Kapil Dev, and that's what we created. मुझे कभी नहीं लगता था कि लोग इस मैच को देख पाएंगे. 1983 के कप के लिए ये मैच जीतना बहुत जरूरी था. But unfortunately, उस दिन TV वाले स्ट्राइक पे थे. और इसे the union which is called a strike five g ki technology se ye aap tak pahunch jayega usko main shabdon mein bayan nahi kar sakta humne 1983 recreate kiya hai wohi atmosphere wohi stadium and most importantly wohi kapil sir I'm 
कौन से स्कूल में पढ़ती हो एवरी सेकेंड द होलोग्राम स्टेज ऑन द स्टेज मोर देन वन गीगा बिट्स पर सेकेंड ऑफ डेटा इज बिंग पिंग वायरलेसली की वो सेंसेशनल देखी नहीं फोन के साथ एक्सपीरियंस भी की इट वाज वेरी लाइफ लाइक एंड रियल एंड इट फेल्ट लाइक आई वाज अ पार्टिसिपेंट दिस इज हाउ पीपल विल वॉच स्पोर्ट्स इन फ्यूचर क्रिकेट को इस तरह भी देख पाएगा ये कभी सोचा नहीं था सो नाउ कैन यू इमेजिन लाइक यू नो व्हाट द फ्यूचर होल्ड्स नाउ लाइक इफ यू टॉक अबाउट फेसेस uh imagine if there's a time you know wherein we you get down to that level of detail as far as you know making human faces look so believable that you are basically mortalizing that particular character now we are also uh, you know back uh, you know in our in our in our company what we are planning to do is 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 you scanning all these legacy actors you know like you know amita bachchan to to ranbir to sharuk now everybody needs to be scanned say every one year you know every every year you scan them and that's how you create a bank of you know those high resolution 3d scans you know which could probably be used you know when you uh, go ahead you know 10 years down the line and 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 say make a film on on uh, like say make a pathan your pathan part 6 you know and 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 make sure that you know that and you look make it look like you know make sarke look like he's is is so young in in uh, in pathan part 6 so there are so many possibilities you know using this tech that uh, that you know the directors will have a completely you know new idea of filmmaking and that's why you know we keep on pushing ourselves to make it look uh, as photo real as possible uh, what we did was uh, to show, you know what we saw in the airtel commercial we we did was i created a breakdown in terms of to show you what really went on behind the scenes to make the commercial look the way it did that's where the future is you know wherein uh, if you know if i'm an actor and if i don't really need to go on set and shoot a film uh, and and it just by my digital version would just go and you know do the stunts or uh, you know just enact what i i just need to give the lines to them as as a voice over and my digital version is 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 going on set and and, and giving my my shots you know and at the end of the day the actors really become you know <laughs> complacent but but yeah that's that's where i feel the future uh, keeps on heading So if you see uh, you know the level of detail where we achieved you know i mean we did a 3d scan in fact we did a 4d scan you know wherein uh, we took all these expressions out of the current kapil dev you know with all his expressions you know i was there right next to him uh, briefing him in terms of that how would you you know he had this classic shot you know the natraj shot and i asked him that so if you are hitting the natraj shot how would your face back then you know because this match the 1983 match was never you know recorded and, and nobody nobody seen that match how would you you know in an act like what what would your expression be so he he gave me all these expressions and we scanned all these expressions in 40 and uh, and that's how we banked kapil sir's all his expressions that how would he actually play cricket and and what is it that that he would he would emote you know like you need to brief the actors that okay or you know in in this case uh, kapil sir that this is you know if you feel that you you've kind of you know hit the century and that point of time there was this 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 fact that you know when he hit uh, the centuries uh, he didn't really know and and he was wondering that why is everybody applauding and then i asked him that what did you feel at that point of time how was your reaction and uh, and and he gave me the exact same uh, reaction in front of the 3d uh, 3d scanners 
And that's how you know, we keep on banking this, this enormous data with all these actors. Now imagine all these legacy actors which we have. Now if we keep on scanning them you know, in real time, you know, with all their textures, as they're aging, you can easily go back to uh, uh, them uh, being completely uh, young. Or you want to fast forward and make them look really old. You know, that, that's the power of having this data uh, with all these actors. It makes uh, filmmaking so much more possible and the ideas for the directors to keep on, like, you know, the, the ideas would keep on opening up. Another thing is digital doubles. Now, this is another tech, you know, which we've been constantly using in, in a lot of films. I'm sure that you've seen a lot of films where you, you've probably seen, uh, you know, six packs, uh, you know, six pack or eight pack abs, and you feel that how is this even possible? I mean, we all know that there's a certain amount of tech which has been used. But again, my, my take on this is, <clears throat> if we again keep scanning these actors, you know, there's, there's so much of ease. Now, this is a, a recent film which, which I worked on, you know, wherein, you know, if you go, go and watch the film, you'll never know that where was this actually used, you know, because for a, for a viewer, it's, it's very important that y'all are completely in sync with what the story says. And, and, and what we did at the back end was that all these bigger stunts, you know, the leaps and the jumps, the dangerous, you know, stunts were all used, uh, you know, we, we used the digital doubles to do all those stunts. And that's, you know, the, the, imagine the power of visual effects, you know, when it comes to really recreating these, these cinema, cinematic uh, shots. Now we're stuck on this stupid tower in the middle of nowhere and i don't blame you and now we're stuck on this stupid stuck on this stupid freaking tower in the middle of freaking nowhere and it's all my fault yeah so that's where i'm unsettled i need to get to that level Thank you.